to see how this goes for the five Wraith King. As for the Void pick, that's good synergy with Mirana with the arrows, good synergy with Clinks, even Shaker. It's kind yeah. of can be a setup for, or at least you can drop a feature in there to kind of follow it up. Um, yeah. I like this pick. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to agree. It's, it's really solid how synergistic it is. It's like one of those like last minute gotcha moments where it's like the perfect Void game. Yep. And they were looking for, for a carry anyways. So. Yeah, really solid snag here. Also, is like when teams have a way to disable Enigma uh, during BKB Black Hole. If you can't yep. stop a BKB Black Hole, it just feels like, well, there's an insta kill on a carry or a mid. Or somebody, Somebody's dying during that. And same against Weaver. It's just so good against Weaver, too. Like a, a guy that you can just yep. kill him before he time lapses. It makes so much sense. So, But the downside is that can Pop Rats on the face of the Void have a good laning stage? And that might be harder because typically your Void's in the safe lane. It's going to be against an Enigma. Maybe they'll find a lane that works out for him, but maybe he'll be shut down as well by Enigma's demonic conversion. Right, here we go. We're going to load into the game as Newbie suffered defeat in game number one. They had a good day one and looking to continue that not streak anymore on day number two. They were three and one and have started today off with a loss. VG Gaming have their first win of the group stage. One win, four losses. But yesterday can be forgotten if they start pulling together a string of wins. Still plenty of Dota to be played and even a potential winner bracket run could be achievable for Vici Gaming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so starting lanes seems to be a little bit hard to predict here, but on newbie side, it looks like some mind games going on, maybe even KP in the mid lane. And that's why he's got two Shire Tangos, so anticipating a mid Enigma pick, actually. Um, I kind of like the basey start. Um, this is an item that I've tried out a little bit with Enigma. It's really good right now just because he's got pretty decent int. It's a lot of mana regen. Um, throw some clarities on top of that and some shared Tangos, and he's actually getting um, a lot of regen. Um, plus, giving armor to the Eidolons as well is nice so that they don't get last hit as often. All right, well, the quick reconnect from Shaker. They did have a power outage or reconnection, so I imagine maybe some, some settings or hockey stuff yeah. that sometimes you have to actually reconnect to Dota games to fix. So, nothing serious. He's right back in. He's right back, ready to go, as are we here at the casting desk. And it will be, yeah, something slightly different. The and Necro is going to the offlane, as we've been seeing, but played by SCCC. And yeah, KP's mid Enigma, with the bastering you were talking about, going to be going up against the Clinks. So not wanting to run Clinks, or the Necro against Clinks, which is surprising, because we saw Necro destroy Clinks mid last game. And Ori's like, let me play the other side of that matchup. I'm ready to dumpster you again, SCCC. Maybe, um, but in the same vein, maybe they'd work out really well against the Marana, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Somebody that can sustain there. Um, you know, is it an overall match win? And then uh, Weaver versus Void. Void's going to get farmed, but I would argue that heroes like Clinks are scarier if they have a really good early game than somebody yep. like a, uh, and a Void. Great Fissure. Yeah, they're going to get some right clicks. The Fissure, I believe, has blocked off his high ground path as well. The stun's going to stop 11 getting some right clicks off. And with S Triple C showing up with the Death Pulse, that's going to heal up Kaka a little Boy bit. The and the body blocks land him in a lot of trouble here. There's another stun in a couple of seconds here. He should be able to get the kill, but he actually goes for a right click and doesn't really follow him up. Another impale in a second. And um, doesn't really have an out. He goes for a fissure, won't get it off, and gives up first blood to the Necro. Oh, give me those four fantasy points, SCCC. Thank you. Oh, Ooh, yeah. That I'm, feels good. I'm on board with that, too. That's Hell yeah. That's the play. So uh, now back to the regular game. Um, that's going to be a great start. Uh, fast boots for him means it's even better to lane against the Marana because normally he's a very, very slow hero or maybe goes bonus damage. We'll see. Yep. Um, I imagine KP is going to do relatively fine mid, but it's definitely going to take a lot of damage from these Clink's right clicks. And considering he had two shared tangos to start this off and no other regen past that might be a little out harassed. Yep. These other lanes get the Enigma versus Clinks in mid. A lot of harass being traded initially. Clinks is going to get denied quite a bit from the conversion on all these range creeps, just taking away whatever XP you can. Top lane, bit of an interesting dual lane. Wraith King with Weaver, but hey, five position Wraith King, why not? And Void with Oracle, looking to just be kind of defensive farming lane. They've got a sentry there for the Weaver, and as soon as they push the lane out, they look to D sentry. And hey, I've made, you, made you miss another kill. It's uh, Fissure into a Clinks kill mid. Yeah, and that's uh, the dangerous thing about putting Enigma here is that he can't defend himself super easily. Even like Malefus is a really long cooldown, so if you used it previously, very likely that he goes down. So we'll strafe and right click, and that's that's the benefit of the boot start on Earthshaker is that he can get from these lanes so much quicker, and that there's the your opponents might not actually realize that he's uh, are the, all the way into your lane already. Yeah, don't normally expect those early support rotations. It's just not really what you see so much on this patch in this meta. Yep. But here, like Shaker, always loves to move around the map, and Mirana. Having a rough time down bottom, but at least getting a few CS here and there and able to use that arrow to get some extra. 
farm in the jungle, although Kaka does make sure he splits the XP. Yep. Uh, he'll find a DD rune in the bot lane. Klinks is going to want that one most likely just because tons of bonus damage that'll guarantee his lane win. But with that said, yeah, with Kaka rotating over, Urshikar's forced to take that. I don't think that's ultimately terrible for Ori because he's probably going to want to stay in the lane anyways. Yeah, he would have missed a couple CS and even got denied if you if he went all out for it. Right, going for the, the straight play, wanting to harass KP a bit here. He's taking a little bit too much idle on damage sometimes. He will get yep. another one killed, but I mean, all this damage is still coming through to Clinks a lot, and the Eidolons are making it work. Caught that one totally dead death. Uh, Necrophos. Uh, looked like Arrow, Starstorm. Still no leap levels at level 3 for Marana, but in the right circumstances, it's the way to go. I mean, that's probably how they can beat him. Just do way more magic damage than he expected. Yeah, I don't think he was expecting the 2 one zero build whatsoever. And says, we'll see, we'll TP right back down the lane. Not the end of the world for him. He is still top of the CS. Three top CS leaders all initially on the dire side. Avoid even with Weaver, at least. And more sentry games cap coming through. Uh, Fenrir. Mid lane, Ori ooh, almost actually dies here on the, the clinks. He mangoes to get the stray fall. Might die. He's ooh, barely going to get the salve. And he's chasing with these Eidolons. They have 310 movement speed. They actually out speed. I feel clinks. like KP could have gotten that kill maybe if he committed with his hero right click, but yeah. um, hesitate a little. Maybe didn't expect straight. Oh, he's going in back in once more. Okay, not going to go for the kill. But this Malefus Eidolon Harass is putting Ori under a lot of pressure. But Lanham's here now looking for the Fissure Block, of course, and Miss Mike Rain a little bit for KP or Eidolon's just sitting passively. He's going to die for sure here. Yeah. He does get his buyout before he goes down at least, but yeah, these, these little Earthshaker rotations are really paying off here. Yeah, and not like Moran is having a miserable time down bottom. Was involved in the one kill, has 12 CS, has had the creep wave under the tower for a little bit now, so... Eleven is at least getting something out of this lane, although he is currently probably going to have to TP back home or somehow find a way to get some regen out the lane. Yeah. And either way, they're still limiting what Clinks can get. 15 and 1 versus a 17 and 15 for KP, which is going to translate to a lot of levels, actually. He's about a half level ahead of where Clinks is at, and getting creeps behind the tower like this is just super simple for him to, to secure what he needs. Uh, Mugi's also sacrificing a little. 18 and 3 is still really good, though. Um, and Faith picking up levels also. He's yep. gone for the double magic stick. Interesting. No, I'm just kidding. That's uh, Moogie's magic stick, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Moogie bought two magic sticks is what we have here. Oh. Maybe he bought one at the base and was hoping the Wraith King would bring it out the lane. Who knows? Are they going to go in for a little bit of a clash here? Oracle gets crit to the face. That was a cool crit. It's very satisfying when you kill people with a crit yep. with uh, that sword cosmetic. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of damage. One skill point, when you do actually land it, it's a big, big damage yes. output. So I bet it was one of those, like, I bought a wand things, and I had it queued up, so I accidentally bought it twice because I put it on a guy, which meant that it disappeared from my auto queue or something. Yep. That's probably what happens. So we actually lose 100 gold. Not, not, super, uh, not super instrumental, but small mistake. Kaka rotating around mid, maybe looking to set up KP. He's got six here, so this is a great way to do it. And Klinks is only level four. He also doesn't have invis. So in a normal circumstance, this is a pretty hard gank to make without a sentry detection, but they can definitely do it here. He's got a soul ring now, and here comes the initiation. Yep. Hell starts things off. KP just instantly goes for the black hole, but gets canceled by the fissure. The rotation was there. Ori's already used the strafe, strafe though. So with the Malefus and the Eidolons, okay, oh, they kind of block each other a little bit. Oh, I feel like with good micro there with the Eidolons, yeah. KP could have grabbed that kill, but... Um, it's definitely not easy, but like the same way like your hero when you attack and then you move like you attack wall, you kind of need to do that with Eidolons a bit exactly. to maximize their damage output. Paparazzi are already leaping, yeah. very likely to die here. He's got a out, but he will not get a chance to use it, maybe with the help of the Oracle. Okay, Oracle helps get the beetle off him, and that's actually going to keep yeah. him alive. Running out of chase damage there. No, I was expecting a Geminate attack that didn't come through, already used. Yep. And one of the weaknesses of Wraith King's support, you've got a stun, and you maybe have a right click or two, but that's pretty much it. It doesn't go much farther. Yeah. Overall, um, pretty happy Vici Gaming side, I imagine, considering Ori doesn't actually die in the mid lane, and that first black hole being used is suddenly... It's true. Nice bit of breathing room for the clinks. You can't really be killed I mean, it. It, he didn't die, but he's still not close to level six here. That's KP's true. almost seven now, so it, like, if I feel like KP plays this lane really well, this is like a complete stomp here. Um, and it, but and it's still pretty one-sided. But like, he should have had probably yep. one, two more kills, uh, maybe one less death here. It's and then one-sided it in terms zone. of XP, but the actual gold between the two is very similar. There 
isn't much separating their actual net worth. Okay, that's because a good of point. the the deaths on the Enigma, and Clink's actually got the last hit for for both kills. Okay, so yeah, I guess that does make a big difference. But you know, levels are gold in some ways. More yep. resources, more more damage, things Bottom like lane, that. Bottom so. lane, triple C, turning around the Genka tent here. He's got the Reaper, not yet. He's level five still. He's looking to bring down Lan M. Death Pulse is going to chase him down, but there's going to be an Oracle showing up with the Face Edict to make sure that he can keep him alive. Necro is still very tanky. He's got an arrow now, though. Yeah. Okay. Has mangoes, one charges. He pops the Ghost Shroud with a Tango and Mango, and he's still alive. Yeah, it makes it go a little farther here. So, kind of curious what uh, Enigma is going to go next. What do you think is the, the current ideal uh, build on Enigma? Are you on the, the Midas train, the Helm of the Dominator? What do you think is uh, the best right now? I like the Helm of the Dominator, but I don't know if being mid changes anything. I, I don't think it really does. He does pick up the headdress, so I think okay. he's going to be on the same page as you. Yeah, Helm of the Dominator into Blink BKB. Okay. This is what Radiant I feel is just down. standard strong, cool, hard to deal with. And he's got a Wraithing on his team. Got to make them Skellies attack, dude. Ooh, yeah. Faith doesn't get a lot of attack. I haven't seen him gotten oh, wow. a single <laughs> Mortal Strike. Uh, I thought you were going somewhere yet, else with the Wraith King, because Ag's Wraith King. You die as Enigma, then you black hole. You can still be stunned. Oh, you can still be stunned. Yes. Okay. That you right. can still like cast disables and nukes and stuff and right click. On I don't know if you can right click, you, but you can actually stun the Wraith. I'm okay. quite sure that you can stun the Wraith. I had no idea of that. Actually, I just assumed they were like untargetable by anything. I think you can. Um, at minimum ground target, uh, but I think you can uh, actively target them. Okay. Otherwise, it'd be kind of broken for some heroes. But you can't target things like the the vengeful spirit. Correct. Rate. Yeah, because that's like not. It's not like. It's just different, I guess. Yeah. Similar okay. but different. Okay. That's that another type of ghost. It's a ghost thingy, but it's not a tangible ghost thingy. So the, the wraith mechanic in Dota is not very consistent. What I'm hearing. Yes, absolutely true. But every ability is different. Caught another amazing kill on the bot lane. That one was a reaper scythe. Then you're going down, uh, not able to face Edict there. So it looked like Impale into a Death Pulse yep. Scythe. And that means tower pressure here. Yep. And the top lane is not being pressured the other way. And this is partly because you've got a Void just to hear that isn't going to pressure lanes. Yep. Through that's just going to kind of farm, maybe play around the Chrono a bit. But even if he's using Chrono, it's not really often to take towers. It's just to get a kill or two. But Chrono into Arrow could be what VG Gaming want to do up top. But unfortunately for them, an Observer Ward has scouted out the Mirana in this vicinity. Bottom lane, being defended. Is SC in trouble, actually. He's Ghost Shroud just in time, though. Yep. After the Fortune's End, so... Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Not taking any damage from the Clinks. Here comes the Void. Great chrono. Yep. TP in the Shrine comes in at the perfect time as Triple C goes down. They want Kaka as well. Pale is there, though, to buy him some time. It's not going to be enough. There's no Shaker Fissure if they need it. They don't. And Fenrir actually gets both kills. Fenrir, my man, give me those points. Right before Bounty Runs 2. Will the Loving grab one? It looks like he's got a ditch, yeah. We'll be uh, grabbing one. So they'll get they'll go 2-2 two two on Bounties, but that's a really good rotation from Paparazzi. Um, oh, was he the first to TP2? No, he's the second, right? He teleported, like, Shrine or something, then came in for the Chrono, something like that. It was yeah. just really good ulti. Oh, we got that one. All right, Earthshaker on the mid lane, looking like he's still going to die. Just a simple zoning chrono. Oh, well, KP. KP getting the kill. Well played. KP, Didn't make any misplays KP there. KP is such a good player, but man, he is. He looks a little sloppy on the Enigma today. That's, yeah. what, it, that's what I'm seeing here. And it's not a hero he's just been thrown on. He's played this one before. But, okay. you know, but mid? First series of the day. Mid is maybe hard. Yes. No. And it's, and, yeah, there, there are, there are going to be nerfs. The Night Shadow being used, they want to go in, but it was scouted, I believe, by the Pop Lion. Side, yeah. He's trying to juke the arrow. He's he's <laughs> dodging left, right, juking the arrow that is not coming, at least not yet. And I'm charging forward as an Echo Slam, but will not find any good targets to use it on. Looking for those uh, no blink free echoes that he can get set up from his teammates. But even if no fight happens here, there's still some downtime. I mean, ultimately, the scary thing about Void is that whenever he's got Chronosphere, he should be able to set up a really big kill. Um, Take some time to do that um, for now. So even if they just get a little passive for now, as long as their lanes are going okay, it'll be fine. Yeah, and it is very passive because when that Chrono is down, it feels like you act you're fully 4v5. Bottom lane, uh, Oracle gets fingered. You more. Top, a bit of a flash going as Ori wants yeah. to chase down Faith, who's not level six. He's close, but not quite there. He does not want to go for a TP. The Shaker will almost certainly cancel Ooh. it unless he fishes on the wrong side. And then, hey, yeah, you, you do go for a TP. Okay. I think he felt like because of the fog there, it could have been problematic. Bottom lane, meanwhile, caught another <laughs> paparazzi. How does he even get that? He had some help in a time dilation. 
Like, no, 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 but that was paparazzi killing Kaka, though. That yes. was like a void okay. without Chrono killing Kaka. That's why I'm very confused here. Uh, okay, he does stay alive. Chrono comes out. Not the best one, but they do have TP support coming. Style Storm gonna hit twice, and that's a dead Weaver. Moogie did not have the health to survive that one. Luckily for SQC, we'll he's gonna go shot TP and cancel. I mean, he must have used time dilations. Like, maybe perhaps the uh, the line uses abilities on Void. Void time walks some of the damage, uses time dilation, perhaps. So it does slow by a lot. It's 14% per spell cast. So maybe. Some bash RNG, maybe. Oh, and use on cooldown for a finger of death because he's on the Oracle. So it's probably yeah. something like that. Just a super slow and right clicks. Right, he's uh, getting Tornado. KP coming in with the Helm of the Dominator. Gonna bring him down. Not the ideal creep, not terrible with the bonus three armor. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Five armor with the with the facilities plus this and HP regen, so should be buildings dying a lot more often now. Yep. Coming to pressure this top lane. Faith on Wraith King. About to hit level six. This last range creep, is it gonna be enough? Not quite. Just gotta deny some idle arms or something. Tower last hit. Radiance top tower. Towers do give a tiny up. amount of XP, right? Don't they give like uh, some random tiny little amount, like 50 XP? I can't remember. I would assume no. It's it feels like one of those things they'd remove for consistency reasons because they were trying to make tower pushing worse, you know? Yeah. I feel like it, for some reason I thought they gave a smidgen. Definitely looking to dive the top tower. This is a pretty early pressure around tier two top, actually. Oh, that is a value death pact on the Helm of the Dominator. Creep. You should not go Helm of the Dom Dominator against Clinks, maybe. That's a good point, yeah. 200 gold, and it's got a, I don't know if it gets bonus HP or not, but it. Yeah. it I mean, yeah, it's a super value. Minimum of 1500. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's a really good ulti. That is the dream creep to be death pacting. Yes, that may be a big mistake to go the Helm. Yeah. I mean, it is a very long cooldown on death pack, but still. Go hunt down that creep, but impossible. They're diving in this top lane. They really want to take a fight here. They've gone initially on Fenrir, who has got the false promise here. We'll see if he uses on himself. No, he's going to use on Lanham on the Shaker. Give away his own life, knowing that he's going down here. The Wraith can catches the arrow, but he's got reincarnation if he wants to skill. They're going to go for a straight up black hole on the Marana. No leap away for you. Reaper as well for you. All the ulties being dumped on 11. That's good. The threat of the black hole. They got him there. Yep. I mean, in the meantime, Pop Patsy is auto attacking creeps, but. Uh, has to be. He doesn't have Chrono. Yeah. yeah. This is five yeah. seconds away, which is, you know, just five seconds too long before he could actually contribute. This is a huge tower to get. This is what, like we saw in the last game, almost never do, the, do we see people even uh, damage this tower in an early part of the game, but. What's a little scary oh, for anybody now? Paparazzi bottom. He got fingered. They do defend the top lane, okay. but that's fine for Newbie. They don't take the tier two, which would have been really so? nice, but... Is, is it really better? I mean, killing the carry is fantastic, obviously. They lose the support, he doesn't waste his ulti, but... Um, I don't know, that's like one of those moments where I felt like Nubu's on a roll, they still... Oh, they did already use Black Hole. They All lost right, the it's support. It's the support for a, a Void. That's def definitely fine to me. Okay. I just feel like if they stuck around, they probably could have gotten the tower, but maybe it's just safer to... Well, guarantee the, the I think the, the dangerous thing is with the respawning Vici Game Heroes is Void could have TP'd in and taken a fight top, or he's just trading the tier two for a tier one. And yeah, tier two is better, but Void is still like feeling okay about the game. Gotcha. But as it stands, Void goes down. Paparazzi, Shadow Blade queued up next. We'll see what Vici Gaming look to do now that Chrono is online. KP oh, has to hide this. This is a play. Oh, you just let it take a lot of damage. That way, when he ulties it, he's like, yeah. eh, do I really want to use that? Get it low, then it doesn't feel as good. Often Clinks will just... Wow, he echo slams that home creep. I don't mind that at all. He also killed six Eidolons, it looked like, so... I mean, Lanham got maybe, I don't know, two or three hundred gold out of it. Um, yeah. It's... I, I guess I'm not too worried. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to use echo slam early on as yeah. a support without Blink Dagger, so... How maybe. often yet do you see a good echo slam in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game? Pre but... I, I don't know. It was a bunch of Eidolons. That doesn't feel great to me. There's maybe some gold. It wasn't that much though. There was like six okay. tops. Like that's like a that's like a creep wave that he basically echo slammed. Okay. Probably. Okay. I'm not. It's it's okay, but not value is what I'm hearing. It's close, but or he walked into a dust. Gets hit by an impale, but doesn't look like they want to follow it up. He's very they're doing the right thing. Very tanky. He has death pack, but he actually hasn't used it just yet. But... That's where things get scary. Is they gonna yep. get the chrono? Void showing up, and they do not have black hole. So Void charging in forward. Can he find that two-man black hole? Are they split up enough? He finds just KP. Follow-up arrow should land. KP should not have a good escape out of this one. There's no real save for him. Echo slam them. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
He wishes. Buyback coming in from KP. They really want to take this fight. Faith is just charging forward. The Reaper comes up, brings down Oracle. What more can Newbie find? With the buyback from Enigma, you got to imagine they're not happy just with the one kill. They're they hoping for more. And without leak charges, 11 should be in some trouble here. But the Fissure buying him some time until a blink S triple C actually oh, going to catch no. the Void. He does have time off, but he's being chain stunned here. The Malefice at the end to finish him off. KP making his buyback well worth it. It looked so good for them, but yeah, the great opportunity to buy back. That's one of those moments where he takes a Chronosphere and the arrow follow up. If he dies, it's okay. Just can get back in the fight and, and back up with him. He even gets a boot of travel. Yeah, did he? I wonder if he bought that after the buyback or before. I was like, where did his money go? He had 2k gold for his blink and it disappeared. He had boots of travel. Yeah, I, I guess that's why he. So he bought back and then bought boots of travel to get here faster, basically. That sounds quite probable, because I don't imagine he would have wanted or needed boots to travel otherwise. And with Chrono down, I think they just know they could go higher ground. They take a yeah. T3 tower, 17 minutes in, newbie. Use Echo Slam. any time. <laughs> oh, man, he's got to be regretting it so bad. He could have echoed and killed the Weaver for sure, maybe getting a follow-up kill, but none of that happened. They just couldn't quite win the fight. Now there's no Echo, no Chrono, no Moonlight Shadow. Things are just in an awkward place for them. Faith needs to be careful. Does have just enough mana for the reincarnation right now. And he's just looking to, to use it as there we go. Gets taken up by Purifying Flames. Slows three heroes here. Who's immediately charging back in to stun up the Mirana. They were trying to finish up this melee rack. So that'd be a really nice pick up this early on in the game. They're going to get a Jeez. finger kill of Paparazzi. They do lose one here. The Black Hole, a smidgen too late to save, save the life of Paparazzi, who is going to buy back immediately and goes charging in. No Chronosphere, a new beat force to disengage. Did not get the melee racks, but they did get a couple of buybacks out of this one. Unfortunately, they may lose more lives here. S-Triple-C doesn't have blink for a few seconds here. Lion goes down to the stray, as does the Wraith King here. Nubia just throwing lives away to protect SCCC, who's going for the TP out. No, oh yeah, the Echo Slam didn't get close enough. <laughs> So they finally do get some kills. And this is definitely one of those moments where range barracks would have been superior. Uh, but yeah, it yes. felt like it was good for them, but so many buybacks just made that tough. Radiance bottom tower. Got to learn from the opening aim, and they always go range barrack first, every single time. Um, I, the early, super early, like, kind of surprise rushes, like, or surprise pushes into racks like this are probably by far safer than, uh, than committing to what they did there. Because now all of that doesn't matter. Like, there's, it's unlikely that they're going to be on the top racks again in the next bit of time, so. Even just taking the tier three and pulling back to Shrine. Like, I would almost value the Shrine over the range racks. Yeah. Because you can secure Rose a whole lot easier. It just takes it away. We'll lose KP down bottom. He gets picked off by himself. There's a counter kill coming out from Necro. Gets the Reaper onto... Yeah, wow. SC will be happy about that one for sure. Um, he's almost got his Ags finished. He's already got the Blink Dagger. Skipped a hood this game. Normally we do see that um, out of Heroes, but there's really not that much magic this game. Just pretty much Marana, Star Storm, Arrow kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, Faith could get caught over here, kind of looking for enemy heroes. Not going to find any. No Sentry down just yet. Doesn't he's got one, but... Here. They know it. They're going to go in him to take the free kill. Nice, even dodging the Impale. Line. Yeah, that was pretty sick. But it's, that's there's a weakness of uh, five position or anything. But so far, I, I would say it's working quite well. Would you? Yeah. I think it's totally okay here. No, no issues with it. It's just a good hero to just be in the front lines and spam your stun, and always save enough mana for your reincarnation. Blink dagger on Kaka, so he's happy. Um, Ori's finished Maelstrom a long time ago. Got a blink dagger. I feel like the BOTs on uh, Enigma is really hurting him now, too. Like, if they get the range barracks and he buys BOTs, totally fine. Yeah. But now he's just got this, like, it's just way too easy to kill against the Clinks there. If he had, like, a Buckler or a Mech mm -hmm. or something, or even a Blink Dagger, maybe, get Malefice, dodge a bin, Blink, perhaps. Blinks on both sides for positions, both Lanam and Kaka having the Blinks, though, so. They have a Death Trap up top. They're waiting for somebody on the VG Gaming side. Newbie hero does show up. They could be in for some trouble here. It's KP, there's a Helm the Dominate Crimson Eidolons. Echo it again. I never, you know you want to. He's thinking about it. Ooh. They're in range, go! Ooh, KP, he's nearby. They see him. He's going to go for the Echo. Gets the Eidolons and the Helm creep. That hashtag efficiency. That one was better. Lanham placed echo. it. He, he knew. I could get the creeps and the hero. Yeah, that was a... Which is great echo, and they didn't have to use Chronosphere yep. Sphere for it. That was super good. The the gold change on the graph, I don't think, shows the helm creeps either. Yeah, yeah. only is the hero changes. Bye bye eleven. Definitely see that. 
His woes from last game continue. Do, do you ever play Lion? It, it pins me when I get an ulti. Like, I get an ulti kill with Finger of Death, and, like, shortly after I get level 12. Because like, then the oh, cooldown would have been, like, 60 it's, seconds less. Yeah, that's a, such a big stuff. change, yeah. It is a great ultimate, though. Um, very, very good. Still, Either way, still very good one-point skill. Proc in a little bit of danger here. Oh, that was a lot of oh, plus 90 hey, no. damage. That's right. Okay. Oh, oh he's, he's gonna going get for it. it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it kind of revealed the fact he warded. I think he realized, well, my ward's being revealed. May as well kill this courier. Absolutely. It's 175 gold per player on your team. So let him get the D ward. No big deal. Yep. And it could have been another place, arguably, too. You never know. Oh, I think uh, the Klink's kind of ran into him. Klink saw him ward, maybe. Yeah, I guess right. But, yeah. Well, maybe. Who knows? Maybe not. Sometimes that those things happen and the player actually just was, had their monitor some, screen somewhere else. Oh, Enigma has finally sold his two teleport scrolls in his backpack. <laughs> a little loss of efficiency, but he's got Blink Dagger, so yep. still sitting in a relatively good spot. Um, assume he's going to go GPM at 15, maybe, over cooldown. Uh, usually that's the case when you skip Midas. But they're wrapping around trying to, trying to collect on these guys. They'll spot him. Yep, there's a Blink Hex. They don't get paparazzi though. He's actually going to turn on Chrono, go for these kills. He should be able to bring down the lion inside this one. Faith is there with a stun. KP. So you going to blink out. He's got out. Oh my gosh. Paparazzi's invis here. They're all out. Lanham gets out as well. What a disaster for them. Faith Sentry was placed really well there. Spots both the uh, Marana invis, but also where he expected the Earthshaker to be. So he might have gotten themselves vision with detection and maybe get a stun off, but didn't quite mm. work out. Um, can they do something while Chrono's down? It looks like they kind of want to push top, but bottom lane, Ori's getting the tier 2 tower by himself. Hmm. Roshan maybe instead. Just more value coming out of the map for, for V2 right now. Eleven gets rooted here. Lanham blinks in, doesn't have Echo, and they're going to be able to bring down KP anyways with Paparazzi following it up. He doesn't need his Chrono. Eleven's being saved by the False Promise for now. Should be a few more heals coming his way. It's going to be close here. Triple C has the Reaper. Is he? Oh my God! He's just going to use on Eleven. You mad man? But he gets, gets blocked. Healed. The damage. He gets the Fate's Edict off, and Eleven survives it. Yeah. This is pretty bad for Newbie now. I mean, they're arrow perfectly timed. Just very easy to kill him twice there in that kind of a circumstance. He doesn't have Blink yet either because he's a support. So. Not able to, to make anything happen wow. on his ultimate. The, the aggressive blink and uh, fissures have been changing this game in a big way. Newbie feels like they can go in and score these kills, but the fissures are interrupting these chain combos and they're just yep. not able to secure the secure what they think they should be able to. This is the, to me, signature Lanham hero, and he is really showing off on it with yeah. his impact on the game with great well timed fissures, just overall great play. Except for that one Echo Slam. But I, I can't. Gonna go for another one here mid, maybe. Yep, he's got a Mirana to back him up. The arrow's there, five seconds. Oh, he leaps into the Starstorm here. He gets the Hex here. Lanham needs to finish off the kill, and he'll do so. He doesn't need 11 to do it. Gets S Ripple C. Yeah, that was a hard one to do. Kaka could only disable one more. He's like, oh, which one's really worse? Yeah. Mirana with the, the leap, probably the right choice. Yeah, she had Starstorm as well. That absolutely would have been yeah. a quicker kill. Um, but still, they're making so much happen out of just a couple a couple of heroes. The the Void, despite him spending a lot of time farming and not being the greatest on net worth, him plus Earthshaker with a relatively fast blink has actually made such a big difference. Those two guys have just been a crazy kill combo uh, across the map. And Newbie hasn't been able to turn out the same thing, despite yep. also having blink daggers. Just you know, really great defensive plays. Even heroes like the Oracle we've seen. Um, I mean, that fight saves the Mirana, and then yeah. as the ulti is about to erupt, the Reaper comes out. I think it was actually timed fine by S Triple C timed yeah. so the ulti was gone, but hey, there's still a Fate's Edict, zero damage dealt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really nice play. And I can't help but, uh, but think of where Newbie was and when they were on the top racks. They had this crazy momentum advantage from getting that buyback team fight. They went for the melee barracks, fully healed now. Could have been a dead range barracks, could have backed off. And then all of a sudden, KP's dying more often by having uh, a Boots of Travel that doesn't give him the same survivability, doesn't give him the same utility. Uh, and that stuff is really hurting him. Even once it gets BKB, I'm still worried for him because he can still get Chronosphere. He can still get right click down by Clinks quite easily. And there's a lot of Maelstroms in the game, so maybe Magic Immunity is strong, but there's uh, definitely some some signs of weakness with, uh, with the way Newbie's played in the last 10 minutes. The prize is mine. See uh, smoke from them. They want to make the next play themselves. Once again, it feels like they have been the aggressors, but when are they going to find an Oracle? Ideal find, but it's still a Reaper kill. Kuria uh, gets sniped by Ori. Is the black hole? Do they go for this one? KP's pinging where he is. He got the Malefus off, but did oh, not. Oh, they receive him. They receive him. They're their sentry that's down, yep. but they're so far away. 
He's going to TP. He's likely to TP out in the trees here. He, is there going to be a blink out the boots of travel? Nope. KP. It's too hard. Still Malphus cooldown, even even if he did find him yeah, there. He had to go for like an instant blind blink black hole, which would have been I think, a bit yeah, really, crazy. Yeah, really hard to do. Um, Paparazzi gets a DD rune bottle. Thanks to Eleven passing over and sharing his bottle. Yeah, he's, he's gone BKB and uh, both damage talents this game. So just trying to do as much as he can with right clicks. I think it's a good choice. He's still queuing up the Ags, uh, still also a good option, considering how good Chronosphere is against heroes like Weaver. Um, but I personally do not like the time lock damage. Yeah. It's 25% time lock. So it's really yeah. a plus 25 damage no. talent, and it's magic damage. So it's not even really plus 25 damage. Yeah, it's uh, approximately as good as the level 10 one. Absolutely. It's, but, um, it's kind of, yeah, it's basically a repeat talent from level 10. Yeah, and so if they BKB, it's certainly kind of crappy, but in the same vein, if you don't need the health, health doesn't give you damage unless That's you're talking true. about surviving through things. So, um, and if he's got BKB and he uses it correctly, I think it's absolutely more than enough survival. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's an okay game. I think he's making the right choice. Uh, Paparazzi generally, I find, makes really good mechanics and like efficiency option choices. Here we go, VG Gaming feeling like it's their turn to play Dota. They've smoked up. They're the ones going on the aggressive. They scout things out with the Skeleton Walk on Clinks. They've got Ooh. an arrow that's going to find KP in the trees. No chance to use anything. Faith in some trouble as well. Ori's there with the BKB clinks. He takes down Lion first, goes for the second kill now on the Wraith King, and that's going to be three kills in total for Vici Gaming. So in the part of the game where, where this is a huge liability to have Wraith King here, he's... I don't, I've barely seen any skeletons get uh, procced. Maybe him jungling would be worthwhile at some point, but VG Gaming just has a really big advantage now. Um, part of that was they didn't have an Observer Ward set up. They didn't have a Sentry either. They were basically waiting to break smokes. But the one guy that was giving them vision ditched a little early, and then uh, Old Eleven, great guess on the arrow, guarantees the kill on KP there. Yep. Get the Marochan. They had a DD room for that. They still have a DD room for a little bit longer, and a Chronosphere. Paparazzi finds anyone, I feel like he's just gonna be ready to chrono right now. Absolutely. Any core hero might make an appearance. But... Fortunately for him, they killed too many of their opponents, so it's gonna be hard to find them all. Yep. So they're still respawning. Try and press forward. They've got good vision in both mid and top lane. They're playing around this mid observer with Paparazzi in the trees, maybe hoping somebody pokes their nose out. It could be Kaka. He's got a gem. He just bought this gem and he's charging forward. Kaka, are you insane? Uh, answers yes. Man, newbie has got to be tilted right now. There's that's not a play you'd normally expect from Kaka. What? He walked right past an observer war too. What is this? He actually uh, walked like this, right? True. Or I mean, may have come from the other. I didn't see which route he came from, but yeah, he okay, walked so past. Yeah, maybe maybe he did I run to the north side, I guess. But man, so costly. Now look at this. There's all these wards in all of their business, and now it's so hard for them to even enter their jungle. That was such a costly loss of the gem. Dire structures are fortified. <laughs> Unfortunate, because, yeah, they find themselves without any map control up against an Aegis, up against all these fresh BKBs, both Void and Clinks having a BKB. Makes it very difficult for them to fight. Faith, he's pulled out five seconds before he has reincarnation. It looks like he should be okay here. They're going to go charging forward for this kill. Just they time. have an arrow, I believe. Can they time it? Yep, they will. And that should be a dead Wraith King. Paparazzi's just, you know, he's going to go time walking and look for a Chrono. That's a attempted finger kill. He's not even oh, going to die. He's even got an Aegis, so even if they do, don't do save him, it's not a big problem. He goes forward with the BKB. Shaker, he's fine. He's ready to drop. He doesn't actually go where he wanted to. He gets the Echo Slam now out on S Triple C here. The buyback coming out from Wraith King. He's just going to die a second time at this rate. Paparazzi slows him with the time dilation. Needs to be careful. He's taking quite a bit of damage. Arrow's going to land, though. SCCC. He's done for on the Necro. He's got buyback as well. Moogie needs to get out of this one. There is a gem on the Shaker. It looks like they're going to be forced to back off. TP in from Lion straight to the Shrine. Lanham tries him with a Totem. Doesn't succeed. And instantly dead is Kaka. What is going on here? As Newbie just throwing away lives, it seems, and getting blocked off by the Fissure. They can't even chase any further. Oh, man. Newbie is... They are just doing what they can, but they're just making mistake after mistake here. Trying to take team fights. I mean, the buybacks helped a little bit. Chases them out of the base, but... They can't I, even get people low enough to score the kills. Even like uh, Kaka TPing in, thinking like, who do I go on? Who do I go on? And just making, I, I don't know yep. if he maybe didn't have vision, but just goes in and gets nothing out of it. They even get a sentry deal in the mid lanes of the obs that they were trying to kill doesn't even get taken out. So buy more sentries. Oh, thanks, by the way, getting another kill. It's going to be Weaver with his freshly bought Hex. Great Finds choice. a huge pickup. Weaver does just have enough money for buyback. 
Well, I I don't even think the way they initiate on the void there was a good idea. Even if Oracle doesn't say void, he has an Aegis, and that's your yeah. finger plus Reaper. It is an Axe Reaper, but that's still 50 second cooldown in a team fight is still a cooldown. Yeah, maybe they just felt like get it out of the way, then disengage, let them take our tier two, then we'll turtle high ground or something. Yeah. So it felt like it was almost so good, but. I mean, there's still no BKB on Enigma. He's very close, though, sitting about 150 away. And once he picks that up, then at least um, he'll be able to sit far back, perhaps, jump in with BKB, get a black hole off maybe. But there's a lot of things to deal with, especially like Earthshaker Ags can initiate at any time. Chronosphere is scary. The Hex on Clinks, like, if he doesn't initiate himself, he will very likely be interrupted or chain stunned and killed before he even gets a black hole. Awesome. holding their side of the map as much as they can right now. It just feels like until they find that high-impact BKB black hole, this game is going to be very difficult for them. And another DD room for Paparazzi. Once again, that's the bottle to pick it up, and he's completed an Ag Scepter now. So one of the big issues seconds. Yeah, that they were facing was these kind of cooldowns they had to play around, but 60 seconds kind of removes that to a large extent. He's done a really good job with even time dilation, too. I saw him catch the Weaver once, and he had three things on cooldown there. It was just utterly pretty useless hero when he can't go Sukuchi every six seconds. So, man, that Void pick was so fantastic. It, it has really just made a lot of difference in this game. And it doesn't even feel like the same game as the one that happened 20 minutes ago. But Newbie will still try to, to scrape themselves out of this if they can, but it looks like Faith right. is going to be initiated on. He's just trying to get some skeletons in mid, and he's going to paper with his life it looks like. Clinks does get hexed up though from the high ground. And Newbie kind of play this. Lanham says no, he goes flying in, gets an Echo Slam on two, doesn't kill anyone off, but he sets up the void to get a nice Corona onto two, including the key, key Necrophos kill. Enigma's dead, none of these heroes have buyback. I believe most of them bought back in the last fight. Necro's on cooldown and they're just gonna GG out. Newbie don't even lose their tier two mid, wow. let alone any racks. I think they know they're about to lose at least two lanes, maybe even their throne, but I, that almost just feels like a bit, like you say, a bit of a tilt that they just GG right out. I mean, absolutely. Like this is this is one of those ones where you go back and you talk to your coach, and your coach is just frustrated because yeah. you had such a big advantage.